What's up guys, Damien Keyes here. Welcome back to the channel. So this week on Instagram, I asked you how much you are spending on different aspects of your music career. And I have to say, the results were very, very interesting and they came from all over the world. So what are other people spending on their career? And what should you be spending on your music and your career? Well, why don't we find out as I take you on a journey of what you should be spending on your music career. So let's start with a big one. How much do you or should you spend on recording your music? Now this was very interesting because this ranged from zero right the way through to thousands per track. Interestingly enough, 40% of everyone who commented uh, recorded for free, which meant 60% of people were paying for at least mixing and mastering, if not the whole thing. Now across the board of people who paid, the average amount was $400, which is about 350 pounds. But if you take into consideration people who record for free, as well as people who pay, the average amount spent by you guys is around $250 per track, which is about 200 pounds. Now that is including mixing and mastering. Some people said they didn't worry about mixing and mastering or did the mixing in-house. Other people said they did everything themselves and then they spent money only on mixing and mastering, which I thought was quite interesting. But this is just taking into consideration the recording and maybe some mixing and mastering. But what about the promo and manufacturing and distribution and marketing and advertising, social media, touring, etc., etc., all of the rest of the costs? When I asked you how much you spent on advertising your promo, your songs, the average answer between nothing and lots and lots was pretty much one pound or one dollar, which is the bare minimum you are allowed to spend per day one pound or one dollar, depending on which country you're in. So whilst a lot of people were saying that they don't spend any money, there were a lot of people who are learning all about Facebook ads and then putting in the bare minimum. Now, knowing quite a lot about Facebook and Instagram ads, it's very, very difficult to get any kind of return of investment on a budget which is so low. So you really need to know your game. You really need to have an ad strategy if you are spending 30 to $50 a month. So I'll be going over that in the next video. When I asked how many of you spend money on a professional photo shoot, the answer was a staggering 20%. Out of all of the people who answered, just 20% admitted spending money on a professional shoot with 80% saying they do everything DIY. And out of the 20%, who said they spent money on a professional shoot when pushed said most of the time that is when they have a release every three or maybe six months. Now this is where I think you can up your game. This is where I think you can get ahead of the other competition. If you think about it, there is 40,000 tracks every single day being uploaded to Spotify. Think how many bands are putting out social media content. They're putting out songs on Spotify. They're putting out videos on YouTube. This is the first impression. This is where people see you and make a decision, not just on your banners, on your headers, but this is also in your social media and this promotes your music. And I think DIY photos are great. We need to be doing lots of that, but out of the 80% of bands and artists who aren't doing a pro photo shoot at least every three months for the cost of 100 to 200 pounds or $200 every three to six months, which you should or probably will be spending on rehearsals, I think you're missing a trick. I think this is a place that you can really up your game. So here's an interesting one. Only 10% of artists have a separate bank account for their income and their outgoing. One in 10 of you are doing that. But think of it like this. If you're not prepared to take your music seriously, why should anyone else take your music seriously? Yes, I know that might be a bit harsh, 
But even if it's a separate account for income and outgoing and everyone in the act or everyone in the band, everyone in the team puts in 30 quid, $30, $50 a month, they take a small amount of money and put it into a bank account. And then when it comes to streaming, when it comes to royalties, when it comes to gig fees, when it comes to merch, everything goes into that bank. Now, let me tell you why that's really important. Because not only are you taking it seriously, but you need to celebrate the small wins. And when you get a royalty check for three pounds or three dollars, when you get a merch check or a merch payment for a tenner, it gets exciting. It makes you think, hey, we could do this more. We could get two or three or four. And I know this because when my YouTube started to blow up, I started to realize I could make money from YouTube. All of a sudden, your brain starts going, hang on, so if I make more videos, I get more money. Well, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna find the time. I'm gonna prioritize. But you don't know because at the moment, everything's just coming in and going out and you pay for stuff as and when you need it. Instead of having a bank account of income and outgoing, it starts to give it this professional feel. So I think there should be more than 10% of you that should have a specific bank account just for your music. Streaming, gigs, merch, they might not amount to much, but don't forget, there are other ways to make money in music. For example, Patreon, or maybe you'll start a Kickstarter campaign in order to fund your next album. Where are you gonna put that money? Well, why can't that go into your music bank account? I think it's totally crucial. Lastly, I want you to reverse engineer your finances. I don't want you to think, what do we wanna do and how much is it gonna cost? I want you to think, how much money have we got and what is the best priorities for that money? Because if you're doing it like this, you can then start to figure out what are the biggest priorities. After all, if you think about it, most people have this feeling of, of paralysis by overanalysis. I've got so much to do, I don't really know where to start and therefore it's very difficult to start. Well, part of that is because you have got too many things to do and you don't have enough time and you don't have enough money. So therefore, why don't we start a bit smaller? Let's see, how much time and how much money have we got? And from there, what can we farm out to other people and pay them to do? And what can we do in-house? And what can we get rid of altogether? Most of you think that you've got a time management problem. You don't, you have a priority management problem. You are prioritizing everything. That is a problem. Instead of prioritizing just the most important things, maybe just one platform. Maybe we're just gonna work on Instagram. Maybe we're just gonna build up that YouTube instead of saying, no, no, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Oh my God, I've just heard TikTok is huge. Don't forget, we've got Spotify. It's too much, we can't do all of this stuff. So let's start with prioritizing one platform at a time where we can really look after people. And if you're gonna do that, you need to be able to prioritize from the budgets you've got. There are so many musicians who do things in a very backward way. For example, spending $400 on a track or even a day in a studio and then $1 a day on promotion. That just doesn't really add up. You've made something great and nobody is hearing it. So we have to be able to make the priorities around the money. Maybe we spend a little bit less on the music to get it so it's pretty decent but not perfect, but we do have some money to get people to hear it. And over time, we will be able to get the third or fourth or fifth recording better. Or maybe we do need the music to be that good. So maybe we have to release once every eight or 10 weeks in, instead of every four to six weeks. So we've got a little bit of extra money to put into that promo or to, into those Facebook ads to start getting people to hear it. Or maybe spending that 3,000 pounds or dollars a month on PR might not be the right thing until we are eight or 10 tracks down the line and we are doing national tours because otherwise, 3,000 on a campaign is a crazy amount of money. Now, I'm not saying it's not well spent, but it's not well spent if you are a starter band on your first single with no stories. So again, let's prioritize where that money should go. What is the best thing to do with that money? The first thing we need to do is figure out 
how much money is going to be there in the first place. And so as I bring this video to a close, I think it's really important that you have three things. Number one is a separate bank account for income and outgoing. Not only so you can see what you're spending, see what you're bringing in, but you can also budget. In which case, why can't we put this much money into this? Instead of, I just need it, so I just spend it, and I hope for the best. That's when you're spending so much, not realizing how much is going out. And also celebrating those wins when they do come in, even if it's just for a few pounds or a few dollars. Number two is a very simple cash flow. So you can predict your income and your outgoing going forward. Now you can make one, you can go and find one online. Anyone who's a member of DKMBA, there's one in the resources section specifically set up for your music career. So if you want to go and check that out. But I think a cash flow is really important because otherwise, you end up spending and spending and spending in the hope of this dream and it can get a little bit out of hand. So grab yourself a cash flow, make some notes and start to see what is capable, what are your targets when it comes to your income and your budgets for outgoing. And thirdly, an idea of what your return of investment should be long-term. Is it numbers? Is it building a platform up so that it can maybe at some point make you some income on the way back? Is it going to play a gig in front of 200 people all across the country? Maybe it's selling a certain amount of merch, but not everything. I want you to think about what is this return of investment? You get to decide what good looks like. You get to decide what you want it to be long-term so eventually you can see maybe where this money is going to start coming back from. Whilst you get to decide what good looks like, you do still need to decide. So guys, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed finding out from different parts of the world what you guys spend on your music for promotion, advertising, and even making the music itself. I am a huge fan of the DIY. You know that that's what this channel is all about. But sometimes we do need a little bit of a push. Sometimes we do need a little bit of a boost when it comes to money for rehearsals or recording. And that's when priorities come in. That's why you need to know how to utilize and make the most out of every penny or every pound that you have got. So guys, do me a favor, like, subscribe, more importantly, come and be a part of this community because I'm so proud of watching you guys grow and watching you guys create. But as always, I will see you guys very soon.